Hey, what's up guys, Paulo Munoz here and welcome to the second video in this mini series. Now, the first video, we covered everything to do with the sculpting and setup of the 3D scene using ZBrush, but now we're gonna move on and start working with the Adobe 3D tools. So this is gonna be another time-lapse with an overview of the different features that I use in Adobe Sampler to create all the materials that I use in the final version of this project. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so here we are in Adobe Substance 3D Sampler. Now, obviously keep in mind that at the time of this recording, I was still testing the, the products, I was still testing the, the tools. So you might see things that are not exactly the same as the version that you have in there, uh, because obviously this was part of the beta. But for the most part, everything should be pretty much the same. Now, the way that this works is pretty straightforward. You just take a photograph and drag and drop it into, let's say, the canvas or the 3D space. Then you can select a template. I'm just going to go straight from an image to material. So the first one uh, that is selected by default, that's all I need. Click OK, and then you are pretty much um, halfway there already. The magic of this software, in a nutshell, is that it allows you to turn any image into a PBR material with all the different maps. So I started with this material of a leaf, which I didn't end up using at the end, but I think it shows the power and the quality of things that you can get from this um, 3D sampler. So after processing the first kind of like image to material, it, it recognizes pretty much everything and all the details. So it's a pretty powerful tool, but then you can add a bunch of different effects and filters to fine tune the way that you want to. So the first thing that I did was a D lighter, and this is basically to flatten, you know, any difference between shadows and highlights that come with the photo. And then I use another filter for a normal height adjustment. And this is just to fine tune the normal or the height um, that is generated as soon as you drop in your image. I also use a dirt layer or adjustment just to variate the kind of like the intensity of the color a little bit around the around the leaf. And I put it under some of the other effects. And this is just, again, to, to break the original video a little bit. Another really awesome adjustment layer is the height to AO or ambient occlusion. And that allows you to generate the ambient occlusion. And that allows you to generate the ambient occlusion based on the height map that you generated or that was pretty much automatically generated. So as you can see, this is a pretty straightforward process. Uh, any layer that you add, like let's say a blur or um, an adjustment of at some level, they're like literally just adjustments. You don't have to do a lot of work. The software takes care of, you know, 90% of the of the work. All you do is just adjust the, the things so that they fit what you want to do a little bit better. And once you're happy with how things are looking, you can go ahead and export these in a bunch of different formats. So you can export directly as a .sbsar, which is the Substance 3D asset file. And that allows you to just basically bring that directly into Substance Painter or Stager, and then you have all the maps already uh, plugged in. So it's super handy in that sense. But if you want to use this asset somewhere else, you can also export them as a PNG and Sampler will basically export all the different maps um, that are necessary to recreate this material in any other PBR renderer. Now for the next material, I use a more abstract image that has some, some bubbles and, and color variation. And this one was something that I wanted to try out uh, to add some of the details or surface details on the, on the bug itself. Now, the main difference between this material and the previous one is that I want this one to be tileable, which is something that this software is fantastic for. So you have a lot of control of how that initial state of the material looks like. And then you have these really awesome adjustment layers that allow you to uh, make it tile, basically. So there's one called literally tiling and another one make it tile. And that gives you a lot of control about the, the fading between the edges of the, of the image or the square image. And then I'm going to use another one called make it tile. And that's the one that I use to uh, basically equalize the colors and make sure that it's harder to recognize the pattern uh, in a more tileable texture. Another cool adjustment layer is the color replace, uh, which basically allows you to change the color, as the name says, and you can um, adjust the luminosity variation. You can choose if you're actually affecting the, the base material and that sort of thing. So that one was a really cool option to take a random <laughs> image that was a bit more abstract with kind of like pink colors and bring it closer to what I wanted to do for this, uh, for this project. So again, this whole project was to test different things. So um, I was testing a whole bunch of different things along the way. Not everything that I created during this process was used um, in, the, in the final kind of like render, but I thought that this material was an interesting one for the eye of the bug. So I went for a more metallic finish and I can use the metal finish from the adjustment layers. 
You can also use a colorize, which basically is uh, an overlay layer, uh, which simply changes the color of the whole material. Um, but at the end, I decided to just remove that and, and export it as it was. Now for the rest of the materials that I'm gonna show you, um, the process is basically the same. <laughs> I, I just cover kind of like the, the important parts. So the rest of the things and the rest of the features that I'm gonna be using are the same. And again, I'm just exploring a whole bunch of different uh, features and, and layers or adjustment layers to create these, um, let's say more alien and organic materials. So for instance, this is something that I end up using in the, in the bug creature. And it comes from a photograph of some bubbles or soap bubbles. I just inverted the height. So instead of creating that bubbly shape, it just creates this weird membrane um, using some of the highlights of the bubbles. So you can create all sorts of crazy things with this um, with this software. And then you can just use the different tools and adjustment layers to um, to basically completely change the material and you know bring it closer to something that could be realistic or it could be uh, used in the way that you want to use it. So in my case was to add uh, some surface details and skin texture to the to the creatures. Now this other material um, is probably something that I would use as a base for the skin uh, creature. So all I wanted to do was generate a little bit of variation in terms of the albedo or the color, the base color. So at the end, this material will be pretty simple, pretty straightforward in terms of the color and it's just to add a bit of um, variation in the surface. For this other material, I was experimenting with some acorns. So I just took a photo of a series of acorns and using the tiling or the make it tile in Adobe Sampler, I basically create this material that can be used as a base uh, for you know adding visual interest and surface noise to the to the bug, for example, right to the kind of like the back of the bug. So you would see me using this material uh, in the next video when I get to uh, 3D Painter and how I apply that into the bug. Now, keep in mind that if you just started with Substance 3D Sampler, um, if you have some knowledge of Photoshop, for example, there are some tools that are really, really familiar like hue saturation, brightness, and that sort of thing. So you don't really need to learn all the specific layers and the different adjustments. You can just play around with those, figure out what they do, and see if it works for the type of material that you're trying to recreate. So just to wrap up this video, I'm gonna show you the final material, the kind of like the branch or leaf material that I use in the actual project. So I think the original image is just some kind of like plantain palm tree or something like that, that I just drag and drop into a sampler. And as you can see, the basis of it, you know, it generates the normal map and the height map, and it has a pretty convincing effect. So for this one, all I did really was to go to the image to material uh, node or the first adjustment layer that gets generated by default uh, when you drag and drop an image into Adobe Sampler and tweak some of the settings in there. But the material that was automatically generated was uh, already pretty decent. So I didn't have to tweak this much and I just exported this as a series of PNG images to bring into Adobe 3D Stager. And I just went through the process of exporting all the materials as Substance 3D Asset Files or .sbsar so that I can use them directly in Substance 3D Painter. All right, so this is pretty much all it takes to create your own custom materials within 3D Sampler. It's a really, really fun tool to play with. And as you can see, it does 90% of the job. Now, the next video in the series is all about 3D Painter. So we're gonna take the materials that we generated in 3D Sampler, and we're gonna apply them to the models and to the scene in 3D Painter. And we're gonna customize them and, and blend them a little bit so that they fit the, the purpose of what we're trying to do, which is a specific project. So I'll see you in the next video.